Hi there and welcome to my weather workshop. Now I thought given that most of the schools are now closed, of course we don't know whether that's going to be weeks, whether it's going to be months, but one thing is for sure we're going to be spending a lot more time at home and in our own gardens as well. So I thought it'd be quite a good idea for us to learn a bit more about the weather in the coming weeks together and also discover the differences that we've got across Scotland in our weather as well. In our first video, I thought we'd uh, have a look at how to make rain gauges. And this is something that we can all do all we really need is a two litre bottle. So make sure you've got one of those at home and we'll make them, we'll pop them out in their gardens and over the coming weeks and months, we should see quite a big difference, especially between the north and the south of the country. It's important that we all use a similar type of bottle. Like in any science experiment, it's got to be fair. We've got to have the same scale so we can compare the rainfall, whether that's in Shetland, Fife, the Borders, Ayrshire, or in the Western Isles, or even in Harris. Right, Harris, we'll get back to you in a wee minute. You can help us position the bottle in the garden in a wee while. Now, we've got the bottle. We need a sharp pair of scissors. And if you're young, you're going to need your parents for this as well, because what we're going to do is we're going to cut the top of the bottle off, and that's going to become our funnel to funnel the rainfall in. So find a third of the way down from the top of the bottle, and we're going to put a piercing in there. So that's us now got the funnel for our bottle, but if we want to measure some rainfall, we need to get rid of the cap. Now this is going to eventually be pushed into the base of the bottle, but in an ideal world, we'd want something with a flat base to measure rainfall. But this is what we've got. Of course, most juice bottles, we have these little indentations at the bottom. That's not ideal, but we'll get to that in a wee second. First of all, we want to get a handful of stones and we're going to put them at the bottom. The reason we're doing that is just to hold that bottle down. It's going to get pretty windy maybe at times, hopefully not too windy, but it could fall over and that would just mess up your experiment because you're going to lose all your rainfall. So we've got stones at the bottom. Now we need to set up the measurements for a rainfall. Now meteorology, we normally measure rainfall in millimetres, but for the purposes of this, we're going to do it in centimetres. So we need to mark centimetres on the side of our bottle. We need to also figure out a starting point too. Remember the bottom of the bottle has these little bits that stick down. We're wanting to get away from those. So we'll probably measure about five centimetres up from the bottom and that's where we'll start measuring our rainfall from. So we take our bottle, take a marker as well, and what we're going to do is find the five centimetre mark, which is around there. We'll just mark every centimetre up the bottle from there. has now got that scale on our bottle now. We need to take some water and we're going to fill it up to the zero marker. There we go. So we've got a nice flat base and that's where we're going to start measuring the rainfall from. Now over the coming weeks, when you're emptying this rain gauge, and I will keep you updated on when to empty your rain gauge out, we're probably going to do it on a weekly basis, but stay tuned and I'll let you know. Um, but what to do is remember when you're tipping out the water, you tip out all the water, you've got to fill it back up to the zero marker to start again. This is where we can now pop the funnel into our rain gauge. And if you've got some paper clips at home, that would be ideal because we want to keep that funnel nice and snug with the base of the bottle. So you can put a couple of paper clips around, also it prevents it from getting blown out. And in this case, I don't have any paper clips in the house and I'm not going to the shops. So I've got some tape, so I'm going to put some tape on to secure it. So we've got the stones in, the water, the scale on, the funnel tightly fastened in. Our rain gauge is now finished. Now you want your rain gauge to be in the most exposed area of your garden, away from the house, away from the trees and the hedges. Now I know that's not possible for all of you, but just try and make sure it's in a really open area so you can measure the rainfall properly. Now because it's right in the middle of my garden, I popped these little logs around it, but you can pop rocks around it, anything that's just going to make sure that you don't come out one morning and it's fallen over and you've lost all your rainfall because the wind's blown over. So make sure it's nice and secure. You can even partially bury it if you're going to put it in the soil. So Harris and I are going to measure the rainfall every Friday. So this week would be great if you could get your rain gauge ready for midday and Friday, put it out in your garden, and then every Friday after, we'll see how much rainfall you've had. So get in touch, send in pictures of your rain gauges once you've done them. Tell me where they are, and hopefully in the coming weeks, between the north, the west, the east, and the south of the country, we'll see some big differences in our rainfall when it comes. But for now, stay safe, 
from Harris and I, thanks for joining the Weather Workshop, and I'll see you on telly soon. Bye-bye.